Filipino Online Professional Services Cooperative is because I believe that this is a cooperative that all Filipino online professionals own, control, and manage. So, the reason why I'm focused on my list is that we need to be in the system and in the system. This cooperative is a group na pwede silang sumama para mas magabayan sila sa kanilang freelancing journey. Ako sumali dihan sa PAPS ko kasi para makabuligak sa ato kapwa mga freelancers and ito talaga ang passion and my mission. I joined PAPS ko kasi for me, lahat ng ginagawa ko sa PAPS ko is a privilege ko siya tinitignan eh. Kasi once in a lifetime in history na bigyan ka ng chance na mag-contribute. Stepping stone na rin ako pa. Maabot yung goal ko. The vision of the organization aligns with my personal vision which is to develop and nurture an organization within Zamboanga City that provides much needed support for our online workers. I joined FOPSCA because the people I've met have the same values, vision, and mission as mine, and that is to provide assistance to those who would like to jumpstart their career as a freelancer. One of the reasons why I joined uh, FOPSCO is um, <clears throat> because, so as a freelancer, I think it's important for us to have access to training, whether free or paid. We wanted our individual reputations to have a collective reputation for excellence. I wanted to be part of an organization that would be a pioneer group of individuals who will be working to promote online freelancing here in the Philippines. The reason why I joined this organization is that I saw their mission and vision towards helping all Filipino freelancers. I choose PAPSCO because he learn and grow as a community to help also other feel more safe and secure knowing that my knowledge and skills will only come from the most renowned and experienced online freelancers and racketeras here in the Philippines. I joined FOPSCO because I saw the potential growth is not just reaching one's goals and being successful, but there is camaraderie. I am very inspired with their achievements and advocacy in promoting and helping Filipino freelance. want to learn props for me. Of two things. Um, number one, I want to help freelancers to get a job. And number two, I want to learn more from you. I hope that here we will all grow together. We grow, we grow, grow together. together. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to another edition of Papsco Academy. Okay, before we start with our uh, webinar tonight, I would like to say that today, uh, this month, rather, we are celebrating the Teachers uh, World Teachers Month. So, para sa inyo, sa mga teachers out there, or, and those who are aspiring ESL teacher, okay, this episode, our first episode for this month is for you, okay? So, I, I am inviting everyone to please stay tuned and watch for the whole okay for one hour isang oras lang naman to guys okay now this webinar series is brought to you by papsco uh, media and uh, filipino online uh, cooperatives okay and uh service cooperative okay and by the way my name is maravic flores today we will talk about Ooh. esl teaching strategies okay very exciting na naman itong ating uh Usapan today, okay? Now, before we continue with our episode tonight, I would like to call on my co-moderator today, okay? Let's all welcome Miss Sydney Vanessa Datu to introduce our speaker tonight. Hello, Miss Mavic. Hello, Paul. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. 
kumusta po kayong lahat? And um, again, welcome to Popsco Academy. And tonight, get ready to learn the best ESL teaching strategies every ESL teacher should know with our guest. She is a cum laude graduate of Bachelor in Elementary Education from St. Michael College of Caraga, held as one of the top debaters in Caraga region during the Law Fortune Cup Parliamentary Debate Competition. A teacher by profession, her passion for learning led her to the world of freelancing as an ESL online teacher. Knowing the endless opportunities in the freelancing world, she remedied her digital handicaps when she recently graduated from DICT DJT General Virtual Assistance course. Through freelancing, she is now able to share her passion for writing and at the same time make a difference in the lives of many through content writing. So let us all welcome again this high-spirited woman, Miss Celeste Sawamoto Aktu. Good evening, Miss Celeste. Hello, Hello everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Thank back. you for having me back. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I'm so excited with our lesson today. Hi. Pagkakabibes nga tayo dito. Yes, okay, diba? Uh, okay, today we I will talk about ESL teaching strategies. Okay? Yes. Uh, yes, for tonight po, Miss Avic, I'm gonna share with our uh, fellow freelancers about the different teaching uh, strategies for ESL. Okay? And I hope nakaka makakatulog ito, especially sa mga bagong gustong mag-engage sa ESL teaching. Or even sa nag-ESL teaching na rin. <laughs> oh, very exciting ating episode today, guys. So stay tuned, okay? Sandali. One hour lang ito, guys, okay? Okay, Miss Celeste, please. You can share your screen now. Hello. Yes, hello. Okay, okay, yeah. So for tonight, mga kafrelis, yung uh, yung topic natin for this evening is about ESL teaching strategies. By the way, can, you can call me teacher Sal if you like. <laughs> okay, so uh, what are? Eto kasi yung ano yung usually yung mga challenges na na encounter ng mga ESL teachers online, especially they are they will be teaching students from different culture. Yung English is not their first language. And like us Filipinos, nga kahit hindi first language natin ito, pero yung um, means of instruction natin dito sa education natin sa Philippines is mainly English. So for tonight, mga kafrelis, I'm going to share with you some of the teaching strategies that I often use during my ESL classes, as well as the different activities that you can incorporate into your classes. Okay, so before that, I should share ko muna what will be the content of our webinar tonight. So first and foremost, eto, number one, what are the challenges that most teachers encounter during classes especially oh and dami yan miss mavic i know makaka-relate ka dyan. and now how are we going to remedy those uh, challenges through using different esl teaching strategies okay and also during sa esl classes natin kasi mostly uh kasi iba-ibang levels ng ang yung mga ano natin yung mga learners estudyante natin so how what are the different activities that we can use in order for our learners to practice new content so ano bang mga activities sa pwede nating um, magamit and fourth how to create a fun and in interactive environment and fifth eto eto na, nakakatakot din ito sa part ng ESL teacher kasi mostly dito, dito uh, matitest yung rapport yung relationship between the teacher at saka yung estudyante yung error correction paano ba natin gagawin yon and kung may intro 
meron din tayong bye-bye. <laughs> How are we going to do that in the most innovative way? Yung hindi boring na every pag mag-i-end yung class, hindi naman natin pa pwede yung sasabihin, goodbye class, see you next meeting. Okay? So, eto. What are the challenges that you have encountered during your ESL class, Ms. Mavic? Could you please uh, share with us one? Uh, uh, Unang-una, siyempre, first is uh, yung language barrier. Yes, it, yun po. Especially kung magtuturo ka ng another language, particularly yung English, tapos non-speaking, yeah. non-English speaking yung, yung ano, yung, yung sadyante mo. So, napakahirap talaga. So, for tonight, magko-concentrate, magfo-focus muna tayo yung sa challenges pertaining sa mga types of students natin na may encounter when teaching online classes. Ito, mawiwindang talaga si <laughs> teacher! <laughs> Ito. So, uh, anong bang gagawin natin? Okay. So, number one, these students never come to class alone. Nakaka-relate ka ba dyan, Miss Mavic? Yes. <laughs> And I bet yung mga ESL teachers din natin uh, na nagtuturo na do have these kind of students. So, sino ba to? Ano bang tawag natin dito? These are what we, what I call the two-for-one students. These are the students na pag um, nag-i-enter sila sa online class natin, bit-bit nila yung buong barangay. <laughs> friends nila, yung family nila during the online classes, nandun sa likod yung friends, saka yung nanay, saka tatay, and all those significant persons sa buhay nila. And sometimes, nakaka-distract din yun, di ba? And I even have an experience talaga. Hindi, hin- I know, makaka-relate ka din dito, Miss Mavic. And yeah. <laughs> uh, most of our friends na, especially sa mga beginners, yung mga bata nating mga English language learners, na aside from them, nasa tabi nila o nasa likod nila yung nanay or tatay or lola nila. Okay, so support ng mga teachers, medyo, uh, wait, we, we need to be very careful on how we are going to teach this these kids or this kid sa during sa online class natin. Okay, so much a challenge din tayo ma- magiging uh, ma- ma-ignite yung ano natin, yung creativity at saka paano ba natin malulusot pa dito. Okay. Challenging. Yes. Okay, meron din tayong ano, number two, meron din tayong mga sudyante that are famous for their disappearing act. Yung mabibig, yung bigla na lang mawawala <laughs> so, habang nagka-klase ka. So, as a teacher, you might find yourself staring at an empty bedroom or other members of the family mo lang ang makikita mo for the majority of the class. Usually, yung ta- takbo ng takbo or worse, naka-off yung camera. <laughs> And this is what I call the Houdini. Red, <laughs> hindi mo alam yung uh, you're, you're talking na throughout the class. And hindi mo alam kung may tao pa ba sa kabilang linya pa or wala. So, that's a challenge din tayo da- diyan mga kafrelli, special mga ESL teachers. So, ito yung makikita natin kung naka-turn on yung camera nila. So, a messy bedroom or yung mga nanay o lola nila na nagluluto. Okay. So, another one is yung type of student na, hmm, eto yung pinaka-paborito ko. Unresponsive, <laughs> bored, at saka unparticipative. Parang, hello, grabing effort ko na dito. Pinapawisan, pinagpapawisan na ako dito. Pero, poker face lang sila. So, ang tawag ko dito is, sabi nga ni Lady Gaga, the poker face na student. So, eto, usually, yung makikitang facial expression ni studyante natin. Yung, yung, yung nagtatalokbong ng libro sa ulo, or ganito, yung mga facial expression, di natin alam kung nakikinig ba sila or wala. And they appeared to be bored at saka unresponsive at 
ayaw talaga nilang mag-participate sa class. And usually, they do tantrums. Ayan! Mga ESL teachers, very challenging to. Okay, ang next na type of student na na-challenge tayo dito during online class is yung uh, busy learners who attempts to bring the class with them wherever they go. Usually, eto, especially in pandemic, yung, uh, yung mga foreign students natin na pwede nang gumala sa mall, saka sa park, ayun, bit-bit yung klase na sa basketball court or sa playground or na sa mall, okay? Unfortunately, para sa part natin mga teachers, alam natin makakadistract ito kay, kay student kasi ang daming distractions around them. Plenty din yung background noise, minsan di hindi tayo nagkakaintindihan with the student at saka unstable yung internet connection. Ang tawag ko dito is tadadang, para lang ano, naka-energizer, the on-the-go learner. Okay, so grabbing challenge din ito. So, eto, si <coughs> sir learner with her friends na gumagala or yung learner na sa playground or not sa park. So, hindi natin, hindi tayo maa-assured kung okay ba yung internet connection tsaka yung ingay talaga. Okay, another kind of student na pwede nating ma-encounter during the class is yung they find it very exciting to be in front of the camera to the point na kahit anong uh, mabibit-bit nila, ipapakita sa'yo. Have you encountered that, Miss Mavic? Especially <laughs> yung ano, if they have new toys or new new things that they want to show us. Okay? So, parang ano, minsan, i-cover nila yung camera. Ganun. Mm-hmm. Teacher, teacher, can you see me or not? Okay. <laughs> teacher, teacher, I have this wonderful <laughs> toy. Ganun. I okay. have a surprise At- for you. <laughs> yes. At saka, pag naka, ano sila, naka mobile phone or tablet, bitbit nila, tsaka ipapakita sa'yo, parang nagtutur kayo sa loob ng bahay nila. And these kind of students, tinatawag kong <laughs> the cameraman. <laughs> oh, okay. Parang, parang, ano, to the point na you are you will be able to meet uh, other members of their family na. Okay, meet the teacher! Okay, this is my teacher! <laughs> okay, so eto! <laughs> Energizer dito. So, <clears throat> the, we have a wide array, a, a variety of students that we could encounter during ESL classes. So, eto, um, uh, as a teacher kasi, iba kasi yung online classes, siya kasi yung real classroom setting. Iba kasi yung treatment natin. On my part, mas na-challenge ako y- kung magkakondak ako ng online classes. First and foremost, wala tayong physical contact. Okay? At wala tayong control sa environment kung nasa yung learner natin. Okay? So, how are we going to remedy those kind of challenges? Ha- Paano ba natin ma-i-handle si learner? Okay. Dito, papasok yung tinatawag nating teaching strategies. Okay, so mga kafrelis, Miss Mavic, at saka yung mga baguhan nating ESL teachers, ano ba yung teaching strategies? Parati nating na, naririnig to. Okay, so yung teaching teaching strategies, minsan tinatawag itong instructional strategies. Okay, ano ba to? These are the ways or pamamaraan or methods ng mga teachers used to deliver a course material to keep the learners engaged throughout the lesson and be able to practice different skill sets. Okay, so ito yung mga paraan, yung mga ways ni teacher throughout the class in order first na palaging engage sa learner sa klase, especially sa mga activities. Secondly, yung end goal natin as teachers for our learners to be able to develop, practice and de- develop uh, skill sets. Meaning to say, kung sa ESL teaching, yung target natin is for them to be able to learn new vocabularies, be able for them to enunciate or 
uh, pronounce words correctly, uh, makaka- makaka-construct sila ng cohesive at saka understandable na mga sentences. And for them to be able to build the confidence para makipag-communicate using the English language. Okay, so, eto, mga ka at saka mga ka fellow ESL teachers, what are the ESL teaching strategies that I use during sa classes ko? Okay, and I bet makaka-relate eto yung sa iba. First and foremost, connect with your learners. Okay, so, yung always remember yung client natin are, is yung learner natin, yung mga studyante natin. Okay? Bakit ko sinasabing kailangan natin i-connect? How are we going to connect ourselves with our learners? First, we have to be able to build rapport. Because building rapport will go a long way in creating a strong relationship with your learners and will help them learn better. So how are we going to do that? First, make them comfortable. How? Again, call them by names, okay? Ask them questions, simple questions like, hey, parang ano ka lang, uh, observant ka lang throughout the class. Take for example, if they're holding something, oh, I see that you're holding a pen. What is the color of your pen? Okay, so that's one way of um, making your learners engage with you and for both of you to be able to build rapport, okay? Parang at easy learner sa'yo. Kasi imagine mo, imagine yourself sa place ni learner like you are having an online class and you will be learning a foreign language from a stranger na hin- wala kayong common ground. Okay, so ang first talaga reaction ni learner is they are very shy. Okay, they are very, ano ba, anxious. Kumbaga, parang naninervos sila. Baka ma-offend ba nila sa teacher or what? Or baka hindi nila malalaman what will they be doing inside the class. So, para at ease from the start pa lang is Masaya ng klase. That's one way. If you're going to start the class with a bang, ay nako, rest assured, pag mag end yung class mo, as long as you are being consistent throughout the class, you're good to go, teacher. Okay. So, next one is we have for the teachers to create a safe learning environment. This is... Very true, especially for the ESL teachers doing a group class. Okay, so how are we going to do that? For make the students feel secure and safe, especially in expressing themselves using the English language and also for them to try out new things in the class, especially during the activities. Hindi natin kasi... Uh, may kakaila, especially for the beginner learners, even the advanced ones, they can commit mistakes. Okay. And we cannot control how their fellow students or fellow learners in the class could, would perceive it. Iba, iba kasi reaction. So how are we going to handle that? Okay. So first and foremost, dapat ma-eliminate yung bullying. Kahit online classes, may bullying pa din nag exist so, how are we going to, that, to do that? May i-introduce ako mga activities later. Okay? So, next strategy we have is establish routines. Okay? So, this is very, very important. Take, for example, if you're having a meeting kasi, uh, di ba, we often say sa mga viewers or listeners natin or mga participants natin na uh, turn off your cell phones, ganun, yung mga classing routines or mga rules. Same with online teaching. Why do we need to do that? Because we must see to it na yung mga learners na iintindihan nila kung bakit may mga ganitong lessons and how should they understand or perceive the lesson content? Okay? Ano bang end goal natin? Ano ba yung dapat nilang matutunan that 
by the end of the lesson, dapat alam na nila to. Take for example, um, your lesson's all about farm animals. So how are you going to teach that one? So, hindi maiintindihan ng mga estudyante what are those different kind of farm animals kung hindi mo mamamanage yung class. This all boils down sa tinatawag nating classroom management. It's, it's establishing routines. Say, for example, uh, yung may tinatawag kasi akong prompts. Okay? Using prompts kasi um, like sitting down, may mga pictures ka or mga mga body languages or mga signals kang uh, ginagamit to establish routines. Okay? Bakit may dapat tayong uh, magkaroon tayo ng routines inside the class? It's because learners thrive with routine and structure and also for the teacher and the students having a smooth flow sa class. So yung end goal mo sa as a teacher, na matatapos mo yung lesson content, having a high yield or high understanding sa end ng, ano mo, ng learners. We're in, sa part naman ng learners, if we do have this routines at nas, sinusundod ng mga um, learners at consistency teacher, ang end point kasi doon, yung resulta, mataas yung understanding or learning ng bata. Okay. So, less distraction to no distraction tayo dito. Okay. And next, ESL teaching strategy. Eto. <laughs> ano ako? Guilty ako dito. Minsan. <laughs> Especially yung early, early uh, days ko as an ESL teacher. Na, we need to speak slowly, slowly. and not <laughs> The words correctly. Oh, oh. Kasi, kasi Ms. Mavic, I tend to speak fast. Kasi, ano, it's how my brain works. <laughs> Pareho tayo, actually. Oh, <laughs> that's, why, oh, oh. Kasi, that's why I often, um, before, especially kung, mag, kung magkakaroon ako ng speech or what, I, I need to have outlines talaga. Kung de ay, para akong machine gun. Okay, so, how are we, why do we need to speak slowly? Why do we need to do that? Why? So, teachers, mga fellow ESL teachers, be mindful po talaga sa speed on how you talk. At saka yung volume ng voice mo din. It really matters. Why? Because if you are going to talk slowly, wag naman yung super slow na para kang slow mo talaga na ilang centuries bago matapos. Um, natural lang, moderate speed lang na to the point na maiintindihan ni student. Why? Because that is the only way that they can learn how to pronounce and announce the words correctly. Okay? Kasi ikaw, as a teacher, ikaw yung model nila eh. Okay? So for example, especially pala, if we're going to introduce a new vocabulary. Mm -mm. Especially kung yung, say, intermediate, o kahit nga advanced, tapos yung word na ini-introduce mo, yung vocabulary has five to seven syllables. Ayan! Ah, parang, para kayo nagtatang twister. Okay? I guess yung some of our foreign um, learners kasi, they have troubles uh, enunciating or pronouncing, say, pronouncing letter R's. Yeah, some letters. Okay, V, Z, at saka P. Kahit tayo mga Filipinos, iba sa atin. Yung letter yeah. sounds. So, iba, iba. Yung letter sounds. Oh, yung phonics nga. So, we need to be very mindful of that. Also, with a volume of voice. Um, Iba ang treatment, we need to understand na iba yung treatment natin sa mga beginners, intermediate, advanced ng mga learners. Kasi for the beginners, we need to speak slowly and softly. Pero okay lang yung, ano, yung volume ng voice mo. Enough na hindi nagugulat. <laughs> Hindi nagugulat sa learner. Pero kung intermediate at saka advanced, you can, even, you can actually talk in your natural voice, volume mo, pero still, you have to speak slowly for you to be 
easily understood by your learners. Okay? So, dapat, why, bakit tayong magsasalita ng uh, slowly? Wag, mabilis. Ba- kasi yung, yung gist dito is yung pronunciation at saka enunciation ng words. Okay, so next ESL strategy meron tayo is the use. Ito yung favorite ko din, Miss Mavic. Use of non-verbal communication. Okay, dito makikita natin kung yung pagka-artista ni teacher magagamit dito. Kasi meron tayong tinatawag na TPR. Very familiar ito sa mga ESL teachers. What is TPR? Total physical response. And when we say total physical response, it's not only our body language. It's the totality of how are we going to convey a message or action to our student, including your facial expression. Yung total physical response is not only pati yung boses mo. You have to mimic the sound kung, kung kaya mo. Okay. So teachers, be creative by using your body language and facial expression to express an action during the during a lesson. Bakit? Because minsan, even if we have um, supplementary materials na iniintroduce o pinibigay, pinapakita ka learners, sometimes they could not grasp what... Teacher, uh, magbigay ka yes, ng so. sample na TPR. Okay. Um... Uh, Favorite ko kasi farm animals. <laughs> farm animals. Okay. Um, say, dog. Okay. So, yung TPR ko is ganito. Or ganito. Okay. Pwede rin amimit the voice. Ganon. Okay. Pero, meron din yung TPR kasi, you can even use TPR yung teaching a new word, a new vocabulary, especially uh, kung ilang syllables. Say, for example, body, the word body. So, para matuto si learner kung ilang syllables yung word na body. Okay, so, body. Well, hindi nakikita yung fingers ko. <laughs> Body. Okay. So, ganun. Actually, you can use TPR in a lot of ways. Depende din yun sa lesson content. How about you, Miss Navig? How do you use TPR in your class? Same. Prep, listen. Look. Yeah, oh, yung mga oh, ganun. Listen. Yung mga basic. Look. <laughs> okay. Listen. So, mm-mm. parang, ah, uh, Yes, oo. Tapos, minsan, um, yung mga basic na gestures, so basic na actions, like run, hop. Yes. Kasi other people tend to perceive ESL teachers naka, ano lang, naka-upo. I don't know with others, but uh, on my part, hindi ako minsan. Depende din sa lesson content. If the lesson uh, asks us to teach some action words, especially verb, action words. Kailangan natin yung perform. Yes. Uh, oh. Jump. Wag mong ipakita yung jump na picture lang kasi hindi yan oh. ng estudyante mo. Yes. Instead, use TPR. Okay? Jump. <coughs> you can even use, para mas maintindihan, use some toys. Okay? So, mag introduce ako ng ibang activities for that. Okay, another ESL teaching strategy that you can use in the class is to make things visual. Okay, dearest teachers, dearest friendlies ko, remember that most of the learners are visual learners. Hindi natin, uh, hindi nila magagras, hindi nila maiintindihan fully what the lesson is about, what the concept is about, kung hindi nila nakikita to. So, allow the learners to engage in the lesson using props or visual aids. Okay? Ang dami ako dito. Ipapakita ko sa inyo later. Okay. So, what is the significance of using visual aids? This is to... First, talaga is to catch the attention of the student. Ito talaga yung main purpose. Secondly is, para makita nila, para ma relate nila yung, uh, yung word 
to a real object. Yung tinatawag natin realia. Okay, I'm going to th uh, further discuss it one later. Okay, so next one is check the understanding of your student. Okay, so how are we going to do that? During the class, teachers should not assume na pag sinabi ni, if you're going to ask, do you understand? Did you get it? Tsaka sasabihin lang, yes, teacher. Yes. Do not assume. <laughs> automatic. <laughs> oh, oh, automatic answer because it's easy. It's easier. Tsaka, ano, uh, nakakabawas ng oras din yun. <laughs> Hindi nagdadrag. Okay, so do not assume na uh, they have really understood the concept. Teacher should ask questions uh, habang natuturo ka. Say, for example, uh, if you're teaching the concept of a dog, of a farm animal that is a dog. So, say for example, how do you spell the word dog? Okay. So, pag hindi mo siya pinaulit-ulit, ang tendency kasi, hindi yan ma maiintindihan ni, ni learner. Okay? Hindi yan maiintindihan. Uh, why do I need to spell out the word dog? Alam ko na may concept ng dog, but, but how? Uh, why do I need to spell it out? Why, why do I need to learn that? I-explain mo. I-explain mo. Explain the context of the lesson a little more before moving on. Kasi, most often than not, yung lesson mo ngayon has something to do with the lesson mo next meeting. So, hindi kung if the, your learner has not understood your lesson today, Surely, your lesson you tomorrow mas lalo niyang hindi maiintindihan. So, yung end goal mo a teacher, yung end goal ng learner din na for them to develop a skill set, wala. Okay? Next one. Twin. <laughs> Nyari. Okay. So, ang next na ESL teaching strategies natin is Teachers, we need to create engaging lessons. So how are we going to do that? Teachers, do everything loud. At ang sabi na nga ni Ed Sheeran, think aloud. <laughs> Bakit? Remember that we have no um, personal tsaka physical contact with our students. Naka-online tayo. Do not settle sa frame na ito. Kasi limited lang. So, we need to, ex kung pwede lang i-exaggerate natin, i-exaggerate natin. This is very true, especially if we're teaching beginning English language learners. Why? Kasi, minamagnify nila lahat, naiintindihan nila ang, co ang concept if it is being magnified. So, for teachers, you need to demonstrate concepts in a variety, in a multiple ways para mas maintindihan ni learner. At saka mas, at isa yung target natin is for them to develop various learning styles. So, ano lang, for example, if you're going to uh, teach them action words like sit or run or hop, yung hop at saka jump, ay nako, ang daming nako confused dyan. So, how are you going to do that? Demonstrate teacher. <laughs> Kung pwede ka, you have to jump from your chair to the floor, gawin mo. Okay? So, next one, eto. <clears throat> before you start your class or before you introduce a lesson, introduce, always introduce new vocabulary before using it in the lesson. Why? Kasi... First and foremost, if the students have fully understand yung concept ng word, eh, ang tendency, there's no need for the teacher to repeatedly discuss the meaning of the word if it is being used in a sentence. Okay? And ang effect nun, sa throughout ng lesson, nakakabawas yun ng oras. At saka mas maraming, uh, madaming scope, mas mabroded broaden ang scope ng lesson na matatouch nyo. Okay, learning the vocabulary first allows the learners to focus on the overall objectives of the lesson. So, 
if the teacher, if, uh, by the way, if the student was able to understand the concept of a certain word, kahit pagbal, babalik ta rin mo ang paggamit mo sa word na yun, in a sentence, in a paragraph or what, madaling maintindihan yun ni learner. Okay? And eto, since we're talking about teaching strategies, dear teachers, do not settle for one. Why? Why do we need to practice differentiated teaching strategies? It's because we have different kinds of learners. They have different learning styles. So as teachers, you need to provide the learners with a choice. Take note, with a choice in learning that could increase their engagements in the class activities. That is why, as an ESL teacher, kahit na under kayo sa company, even if you are a, a freelance ESL teachers, you should provide a, a varied na ano, a varied activities. Yeah. At the beginning yes, of the lesson pa lang, di ba pwede mo nang i-assess yung bata? Yes, oo. Oh, oh. Yung assessment na gagawin mo, it could be yung prior knowledge nila that you can use pa, uh, or you could integrate para sa lesson nyo now. Or yung assessment mo has something to do with your prior experience that could be, that has something to do with your lesson now. Okay, so for example, uh, your lesson, yung lesson is about school. Okay, so if wala ka pang in-introduce na vocabulary mo, yung assessment mo is, magbibigay ka ng ano, activity. Say for example, a puzzle. Okay, so picture puzzle ka. So ano ka, you, are, you will let the student uh, identify or guess what the picture is all about. Okay? So, pag ma-relate nila, kasi <coughs> identifiable sa kanila kasi yung school. Kasi they have the, the first-hand experience of that. So, nakaka-relate sila. Okay? So, they're on. Yung lesson nyo about sa school, it's easier for the teacher to, to transcend the lesson. Yung mga... Uh, other details pertaining to the topic of school. Kasi may prior knowledge, may prior experience na si, na, si learner wherein doon na maitatap ni teacher. Okay. And last but not the least, eto yung favorite ko din. <laughs> okay. So, teachers, do not forget to incorporate technology. Eto ha. I need to clarify this out. Kasi yung iba, when they heard the word technology, all they think about is may kuryente, it's either digital or electronic. Okay, sa, sa mundo ng mga teachers, when we say technology kasi, uh, we categorize it into two. Meron tayong tinatawag na traditional, at meron tayong tinatawag na digital or electronic. Ano ba yung traditional? Yung traditional, say for example, yung mga things na nakikita mo at hand. Around. So when you say, May, meron kang DIY na props, yung visual aids mo, Manila paper, pencil mm. pen, ganun yung blackboard, yung eraser, Cut out yung pictures. eto, <laughs> dragon, ano to, dragon egg, meron akong uh, toys na pwedeng magagamit, colored pictures, mm. even realia. Ano ba tong realia? Realia is yung mga real objects, like cell phone. <laughs> okay, or I use maracas. Okay. Meron tayo nun. Now, how about yung digital or electronic na technology? So, sa class kasi, um, eto, yung, especially yung, yung mga freelance na ESL teachers, you could use audio or video clips mm -hmm. in the class. Especially, uh, if you are, if you want, if you are teaching kasi, yung something na hindi mo hindi na kaya ng PPRs mo. <laughs> okay. Um hindi mo naman pwede kung real hindi mo naman pwedeng dalhin sa loob ng klase mo yung yung car. Okay, if you don't have a toy car. So you can have a video clip of that or hindi mo naman pwedeng dalhin yung simbahan if you are teaching about church or what. Okay. Also 
eto yung pinaka-favorite ko. Especially, uh, yung ano, nakakatulong talaga ito. Okay. Educational Interactive Games. Ang daming nagsusulputan online that ESL teachers could use it for free. Why is Educational Interactive Games very important? Kasi, first and foremost, we have to to be reminded na napaka-teking ng mga sadyante natin ngayon. <laughs> Even as as young as they are, mm. oo, they can easily manipulate the tablet, the computer, or, or even the cell phone. Exposed na sila noon. Yes, papakitaan ka nila ng ano. <laughs> oo, especially sa camera man. Oo, meron ako sa encounter akong sadyante ganoon. Teacher, teacher, I have this game. We have to play it. Ako naman, nagkukumahog na teacher. Sa next lesson ko, hinahanap ko talaga yung, yung game. Asan ka ba? So that I can use it sa next class. Especially if you're teaching, uh, when we say kasi English, hindi lang kasi words. It's, Sometimes, the, uh, most often than not, the usage of the words in the real setting. Uh, say, mga countdowns, mga ganun. May, may, may counting din tayo. May, mm. may mga numbers tayo. Integration. So, eh. Yes. Okay. So, for them to be able to relate to the topic, so, might as well use educational interactive games. Okay? So, at saka, yung reward system din in using the educational interactive games dere derecho para may play first second place yay <laughs> pero di mga cameras na meron na siyang mga mm-hmm. pwedeng magbigay ng rewards di ba oh oh tsaka and also yung uh, so ganitong interactive games available online minsan kasi you can use it as a homework for them parang supplementary mm. O, pang-practice, assignment mo, gawin mo to, okay? And you tell me what are the different words that you have come up with. Oh, ganon. <laughs> Para okay. sa mga ano to, freelancers na ESL uh, oh, oh. teachers. Kasi kung uh, ano kayo sa isang company, they provide naman everything. Yes. Pero meron naman kasi ESL companies that they have their own interactive games. Yes, na yes. naka-integrate na sa lesson nila. Which is really, really good. Okay, so, eto. <laughs> How are we going to, eto. What are, eto, i-share ko the different activities na, ano, na ginagamit ko. Some of which, uh, depending kasi sa, sa types of learners that I have in a particular class. So, what are the different ways to encourage your students to engage during your class? So, yung may wow factor, yung how to make the first impression that lasts. Okay? So, yung start with a big bang na mapapawaw talaga si estudyante. Kasi, pag di mo makuha yung kiliti ni learner, Miss Mavic, ayun! Expect mo na yung poker face na estudyante mo. <laughs> Or... Mm-mm. Or may kiliti. Yes. Babalik-balik ka. <laughs> yeah. ang kanila. Di Oo. Oh, oh, fully book ka talaga. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. So, eto. Dito muna tayo sa how to make first impressions last. Okay. First and foremost, yung sinabi ko kanina, yung how to build rapport with your students. Yung greetings and introduction mo pa lang. Pak na pak na talaga. How are we going to do that? Sa akin kasi, um, yung greetings ko, before I call them out, I used to sing them a song. Using my ukulele. <laughs> You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. Oh, ganun. Or, yung, if we have a song in the class, pinapatugtog ko, we sing along together. Um, gustong gusto ng mga bata talaga mm. to sing. Regardless of race, regardless, regardless of cultural background, kahit may language barrier kayo, kahit sim- simpleng happy birthday to you, ay, ang saya-saya nila. And it's as if they feel that, Birthday nila because, ay, prefer ni teacher yung yes. birthday ko. Kahit kakatapos, malayo pa yung birthday ni student. Okay? So, unique and fun song. Kahit um, yung mga action songs, o oh, forte nila yun. Yung may, yun nga, dito mo magagamit yung exaggerated gestures mo. Yung uh, 
Put your right hand in and put your right hand out. And shake it up. Parang ganun. <laughs> Tsaka, exercise na din yun ni oh. teacher. Kasi babad ang pagkakaupo niya yes, buong maghapon. Oo. Oh, oh. At eto, dressed for success dapat si teacher. It be reminded mga teachers na yung visual aid na pinaka-importante sa klase is yung si teacher mismo. Si teacher pinaka-best na visual aid sa class. Kasi si teacher ang stimulus sa klase. Siya ang nag-i-initiate ng reaction or response kay student. So para ma-engage mo yung learner, eto din yung Miss Mavic, yung isa sa pinaka-favorite. Oo, oh, 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 with, oh. Oh, oh, ganito ako sa kahit natin. Ang cute. Oo, oh, 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 para ano, natatawa talaga yung kahit mga parents. Oh, Makakuha sa dyan. talaga yung attention ng bata eh. Makakuha mo talaga. Minsan nilalagyan ko pa ng ano, yung red. Ah, meron kang red dito sa nose mo. Oh. Uh, hinahanap ko. Nila, nilaro na ng puppies ko dun sa labas. <laughs> okay, so, actually, you can use costumes, wigs, makeup, crazy eyewears, funny hats. Okay, eto ako, imagine nyo na lang ako kumakanta using my ukulele. You can use funny hats like this. Oh, bakit may rainbow si teacher? Oh, mm. Or, you can use um crazy makeup. Andale. Um, One time, ginawa ko to dati. And, and what's funny about it, kasi yung, uh, after my my class, the next estudante ko naman, yung mga advance, mga estudante, yung mga college students. Gugulat sila. sila. Ako, yes. <laughs> so, Misan ay, Minsan ayaw nila, especially mga adults na mga students, oh, ayaw, ayaw nila yung may mga props, mm-hmm. pinapatanggal nila sa iyo. Oo. Oh, oh. Kaya nga, that time, hindi nabi ko, na-make up talaga ako. As in, in ko talaga. At saka sinabi ko, ah, parang schedule na lang kita. Oo. Oh, oh. Kasi si, oh. teacher, why, why are you wearing that? Like that. Mm-hmm. Mga ganun-ganun, lalo na adult, ayaw nila. Yes. Okay. So, next one is, um, Make the students comfortable with you, okay? And um, how are you going to do that? Yung sinabi ko nga sa kanina, greetings pa lang, introduction na pak na pak. What I usually do in my class is, I I guess, ano, very familiar ito, nag-trending ito dati, di ba? Yung mga t-shirt na, ano, sa real classroom setting kasi yon. And inu- ginamit ko din yun sa in the past. So, uh, whenever I have a group class, isa-isa sa kanila, I have a very special way of greeting them. Say, high five, bump fist, a butterfly kisses, all those sort of things. And, For them kasi, it makes them very special. It makes them parang akin yun eh. Bigay sa akin yun yung teacher. Parang in-include pa. You establish what we call inclusivity sa class. Okay? Parang um, yung fist bump mo para kay ano lang, kay, kay Paul. Ganon. Para lang sa kanya, hindi ako pwede mag-fist bump kay kay Pearl. Oh, kasi yung face bump kay Pearl. Para sa kanya lang. Oh, <laughs> lang. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, so, parang may ownership, kumbaga, para sa kanila. And also, yung, yung mga, yung mga, um, friendly kisses. Okay, so, that's one way of making them comfortable with you. Okay. So, eto, we have the details different teaching materials available which you can use in the, inside the class. So, ano ba to? Okay, so, meron tayo yung reward system. So, as an ESL teacher, do not be, ano ba, um, wag mong tipirin yung sudyante mo in giving rewards. Okay? Yun lang kasi nagpapasaya mm, sa kanila. Tama. That is one way for them to fully and engage sa activity. Kahit isang candle lang yung cake. Eto, okay. So, scoops of ice cream, eto. Very, favorite ano, nila yan. Favorite yan. Mm. Oo. Kasi, even 
eto, yung hamburger talaga. Ayan, siyang hamburger oh. na yan. Kung tuwa sila dyan, isa-isa, yung, y- yung oh, pwede oh. na, ano mo, yung yes. na-assemble siya isa-isa. Oh, oh. Oh. At saka yung cookies, yung Cookie Monster. monsters. Mm. Oh, yung mga stars. Okay. Kahit na, ano, I, I do that whenever I do contests sa school to have the competitive spirit ng mga sudyante ko. If not, um, I, if they were able to read the words correctly, okay, ganon. Yung mga ano lang, mga motivational words, like Mas super simple. great, oh, oh, wow, bravo! Or kung group class ako na, okay class, let's give them five claps. One, two, three, four, five. And say, hooray! As simple as that. Okay, nabubus kasi yung confidence ni learners. Okay. So, eto din yung props, Miss Navic, yung props mo. <laughs> Hand or finger puppets, headgear, pictures, eto. Ang daming nalilito, sabi ni last snake, no, I said oh, no, this is a frog. frog. <laughs> <laughs> Ang dami, meron din akong toys dito. Meet Dina the dinosaur. Okay. Mga Sa collection, yung, yung mga toys, ko. yung ano, yung mga toys ng mga anak ko. <laughs> Pwede mo Eto, gamitin. Yung ball. Oo, ang dami kasi. May panda ba ako dito? Tsaka even musical instruments. Yes. Okay. Uh, when we use props, do not limit yourself na ikaw lang gumagamit ng props. Okay? If may, may meron kang sudyante na si show off sa cameraman na gano'n, <laughs> Make use of what they are bringing into the class. Mm-mm. Parang props na din nila mm. inside the class. Participation na rin ng Participation student. na rin nila. Okay, so there are a lot of ways. Oh, oh. So, meron tayong different props like yung sticks, popsicles, yung mga animals. Kahit yung mga crazy hats. Yung mga party hats, mag yung itapon, yeah. utilize oh. it. <laughs> Magagamit din natin yun. I... Kahit yung mga sunnies, yung mga eyeglasses, do not throw it away. Innovate it. Uh, be creative about Oo. it. Lagyan mo ng yes, colors, tama. Yung colored papers. Um, Actually, hindi naman, yun. ano, di ba, uh, Miss Celeste, hindi mo naman kailangan gumastos talaga. Yes. Pag naging yes. ASL teacher ka, kailangan mo lang talaga maging creative ka. Yes, very good. Thank you for that, Miss Mavic. Okay, and ito yung sinasabi kong prompts. Prompts are used in order for, ano, uh, to establish routines for responses and instructions like sit, quiet, ganun, answers, or ganun, mga, mga uh, instructions that you have to establish consistently inside the class. Like, like yung, as simple as how to draw a circle, how to mm-hmm. use a mouse, how to dance. That is a yes, that is a no. Pwede kang TPR dito, pero ng props ang gamitin mo. Okay? So, that would be all, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. <laughs> and I hope ang dam- <laughs> May natutunan pa yun. Yes, ang dami niya share ni Miss, <laughs> Miss Celeste. Yung mga uh, nagbabalak maging ESL teachers dyan. At saka yung, o kaya yung mga ESL teachers dyan. I hope na yung mga tips ay, na and strategies na senior ni Miss Celeste niyan ay magamit niya. Okay? Uh, uh, uh. Okay, before we continue, uh, babatiin ko lang yung ating mga Facebook Live viewers. Hello to our uh, Facebook Live viewers. <laughs> oh, Sir Dennis is watching uh, here right now. Hey, Sir Dennis. <laughs> oh, uh, before we continue, uh, mag- meron tayong question and answer. Mm-hmm. Po. Okay. Punta na lang sa question and answer natin. Far Ako away. Na okay. <laughs> uh, a-, a-, a while ago, Miss Celeste, you-, you have mentioned about these different types of students. Mm-hmm. Diba? Alin dun yung pinaka favorite mo? <laughs> Ano, yung yung favorite ko kasi yung si ano, si Poker Face talaga, si Poker Face. Kasi hindi mo mababa, mababasa ko anong nasa isipan noon. Ay hindi ka, yun sinasabi ko. Wala reaction. Wala ang re- carry a reaction. Na- nasa challenge ako doon kasi that would question my ability as a teacher. Bakit hindi ko napapasmal kahit hindi mo makuha no. makuha yung kiliti ni ano eh yung kaklase niya tawa ng tawa ba siya hindi 
<laughs> okay. Na, Pero ano, ka. actually, we have uh, a lot of activities that teachers can can integrate, can use uh, online, like, like yung mga games, and daming games, and daming interactive games online available. If not, you can make use of the ano, DIYs mo. Pa-contest ka, okay? okay? If you only have one student, pwede din yun. Mm-mm. As, actually, once nag-react to si Poker Face na to, achievement na yan sa'yo. <laughs> yes! <laughs> At isa din yung, ano, yung challenge ko, yung ano, hindi si Houdini, it's si, ano, si cameraman. Oo. Teacher, teacher! At na lang pinakita sa'yo. Oo, oh, oh, seryoso, seryoso. <laughs> kanal, kasi yung ano mo, yung oras mo, oras mo. Okay. Ma- uh, Miss Mavid, meron pa ba tayong question? Yes, uh, we have a question. So, Denise, <laughs> question? Alright. So, hi. Good evening, Ms. Celeste. Ay, kinakaban ako. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Um, this is more on personal questions. So, mm-hmm. would that be okay? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the best thing that happened for you as an online professional slash ESL teacher? Okay. Actually, I, I still, I have a lot. I have a lot to share, Sir Dennis. Especially, uh, can I name two? Okay, first one is, yung nakahandle ako ng mga beginners talaga, as in zero English talaga. Then in a short span of time, they were able to, uh, to construct sen- sentences, even simple ones, at naintindihan nila. And they're so proud of it. At saka, paano ko nalalaman yun? Kasi yun yung feedback ng parents. Feedback ng parents. At saka, if an ESL teacher employs just as a company, makikita kasi yun sa ano, sa performance rating mo. Performance feedback coming from the, ano, the, the clients. Secondly, meron talaga akong isodyante na di talaga parang ano, uh, ma- ma- may kakategorize ko siya as a cameraman. His name is Kenny, okay? Uh, before, naka, nakabook kasi siya sa akin. And pag nakabook na, you cannot say no. During hmm. that time, is Mavic, okay? When, before ko uh, check yung lessons, pinabasa ko talaga yung feedback ng mga teachers. Hmm. And it's so very disappointing talaga yung feedback. Kasi, ano, very unruly, hindi nakikinig, uh, all those sort of things. As in, zero learnings talaga. At dun ako na-challenge. And, naka, ano pa, gabi pa yung oras na, to the point, yung, yung time, dun pumapasok yung admin to check on you. And, dumo, dumo, dumobla talaga yung ano ko, yung problema, yung sakit ng ulo ko dun. And what's so satisfying, gratifying about it was that si, si Kenny, ako lang talaga yung pinipili niya ang teacher. Wala lang talaga yung ibang teacher. Umiiyak siya pag hindi ako. Secondly, naka-recite siya ng poem, sir. <laughs> Oo. Actually, nursery rhyme yun. Oh, uh, twinkle, twinkle, little star. And I was so proud of him. And he was able to perform it sa class nila. And, oh, uh, umiiyak talaga. Teacher, y- yung parent, teacher, thank you. <laughs> Parang ganun. Yeah, so those were uh, the best times I have. Okay. Nakakatawa talaga yung mga, mga experiences mo talaga as an ESL teacher. Hindi mo ini-expect na magagawa mo siya pag nandodun yeah. ka na. Okay, at mm-hmm. actually, sa umpisa naman talaga, mahirap. But once the, you're into it, na, you, tried, you love what you're doing. Yes. Adalina. Pak na pak. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh. Pero okay. Ano din, learning experience din din yon sa part ng teacher. Yes. Continuous learning pa rin tayo dito kasi uh, yung pag uh, pag assess mo lang sa bata from the start ng lesson hanggang sa matapos yung lesson kung paano kung may natutunan ba siya or what talaga yes. yun ang tatan yun ang, yun ang talagang isa sa pinaka challenging as an ESL teacher at nalampasan naman natin yun <laughs> yes <laughs> okay uh so Dennis meron pa ba tayong question out there 
All right. Uh, thank you very much, Ravi Avik. So to summarize with our episode tonight, so one more or follow-up question would be, um, what advice you can give to our aspirant ESL teacher, Ms. Celeste? Okay. Uh, pwede, kong, pwede ba akong mag-ano, sir? Mag-share screen. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Ano? <clears throat> Meron kasi akong uh, ver- uh, quotation na lang na isi-share sa kanila. Naglulurig pa. Okay, uh, uh, it's a quotation coming from Sir Ralph Marston. Marston. For teachers to start strong, stay strong, and finish strong by always remembering why you're doing it in the first place. Hindi lahat ng tao akala kasi nila ang daling maging teacher. No. <laughs> Sabi nga nila, it takes a community to raise a child. It takes a country to raise a child. And dami talagang hurdles, dami talagang challenges. And it's it's not only a learning experience sa part ng, ng, ng learner mo, ng child. It's also a very important learning experience then as a teacher. And teacher, if ever meron kayo na-encounter na pagkabait-bait na isodyante together with yung mga backup personalities niya. Do not give up. You can do it at saka we believe in your capacity. And by doing what you love, you inspire and awaken the hearts of others, especially the young ones. <laughs> wow! O yung mga aspiring t- uh, ESL teacher dyan. Okay. Uh, pakinggan niyo yung uh, huling message ni Miss Celeste. Talagang, uh, you have to love the work. Okay? Love what you're doing. Kasi, pag hindi mo nga minahal yung trabaho mo, syempre, mas, mas mahirap naman para sa yun. Kaya, kailangan pagka uh, inaccept mo yung job, mamahalin mo rin siya. Right? And, sino bang hindi ma-fall in love sa mga cuties na mga sadyante mo. <laughs> Taumpisa lang naman siya, taumpisa lang naman mahirap talaga. Pero once na uh, use into it na, part, wala na, ano na sa'yo siya, madal, napakadali na. And also, teachers are very transparent in the class kasi. And kung ano yung vibe, yung aura na ini-exude ni teacher, Naka, nakakatch yun ng sudyante. If the teacher seems uninterested in the class, nagmamanifest yun, nakukuha yun ng sudyante. So make sure ESL teachers na ano, kahit bumagyo man sa, la- sa labas, be at your best. Because yung future ng bata or kahit adult learner is nakasalalay sa'yo. Okay. Dennis? Talaga, humuhugot pa tayo, no? Yeah, huli na. Humuhugot <laughs> uh, Literal na nabagyo na po tayo because of Judy. Eh? But of course, <laughs> we are not going to let you have that storm without this particular uh, certificate that we are going to show. Can we acknowledge if you can see it on your screen? <laughs> I hope. Can you acknowledge kung okay na siya? Or it's still loading? Okay na. Of course, <laughs> this is a certificate of appreciation is hereby awarded to Ms. Celeste Sawamoto Aktub for being a resource person on the webinar session tonight entitled ESL Teaching Strategies initiated by the Filipino Online Professional Service Cooperative, specifically Fopsky Academy, of course, held on tonight, September 7, 2021. Signed by yours truly, Dennis Patio, and of course, our chairperson for the pop school, that would be Ms. Rochefel Rivera D. Ocampo. So let me stop Thank my sharing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay, so again, if you found value in this particular uh, episode or show, can we share so that um, we can inspire more? Kasi nakaka-inspire yung mga sinesha ng ating mga... A resource person here. And of course, don't forget to click the notification bell para kayo po ay ma-update sa mga upcoming mga webinars. Yes, and kindly yes. follow and subscribe our social media platform. Just type in fopsco.ph para sa mga susunod pa nating mga 
episode. episode. Maraming salamat yes. po. Thank again, you so this much. Is, thank you very uh, much. So again, this is Dennis Bipaggio reminding you here in Pop School, we, we grow, grow together. 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 Good night. Thank you very much. See you next week. Thank you. I hope that here we will all grow together. We grow, we grow.